Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's time for another drawing tutorial and this time we're going to do a bird. This bird. But this bird anyway, I didn't even know they existed. They're called the Painted Bunting Bird. It's in the cardinal family. It lives in North America. It's not an endangered species, but it's a threatened species. And they don't get their bright colors until the second year of life. So I guess that's when they reach puberty. Which that's like a late bloomer. I, I was a late bloomer. I feel like I didn't reach puberty till I was like 15 or 16. And if this is your spirit animal or your spirit bird, it represents knowledge, intelligence, and also to remember to add color to your life. And you know, even if this is not your spirit animal, you should always remember to add color to your life. So we're gonna draw this. I've already drawn it. I'm gonna turn it into a painting, so I needed to make sure I didn't mess it up. So I started with pencil, but I'm gonna show you more or less the steps I went through to draw it. So the first thing when drawing a bird that you should like think about is like how much of the tail do you want to incorporate. The length of the tail will determine how big your bird is. Luckily this bird doesn't have a big tail but if it had a huge tail then the bird would be smaller. So this time I said okay let's put the whole tail in since it's not that long. But normally if they're very long I choose to crop it just so we can get more of the body. So I'm going to use different colors because a black sharpie is almost impossible to disguise in a painting because it keeps coming through as purple, unless you want that. So the first thing is that, okay, so I do want the tail, so I'm going to put it in. So I start adding the lines. And these are just preliminary lines when you start drawing because you might have to readjust. And then the back of this. This part here is yellow, and then he has a blue head, so curve it. If you're doing this with pencil, do it lightly in case you don't like the lines you've made. And then the, the little feathers. Yeah. Actually, he has a little blue feathers up here. Curve this down so you can make the wing. And there's even some blue in these wings, part of the feathers. I guess even all the way down here. So this part right here is red because the, this wing is like right here. And then the other one is kind of in the back. You only get pieces of it. Add a little more of these feathers. These are green, and this marker sucks. Those will go in there. They almost come down a little bit too. But I feel, I feel like a woman. Da, da, da. These are actually purple, I think. This will come down, and then there's small ones right here that are purple. This is like a combo of purple, green, and red. This right here will all be red all the way down. This is all yellow. This is also very hard to hide with yellow paint. We have some more green feathers up in here. And now their chest. The chest and the bird is all red. I know this isn't red, but I don't care. Because it's orange and red could cover orange. So just make some little sigil sideways until you get the sh desired shape that you want because you can always erase. It goes all the way to the beak. Actually, the blue goes all the way up here. Connecting to the beak. All this feathers are blue. Now let's get to black because so put in the eye. 
this part around it will be like orange and stuff, but there's small enough feathers around it that you, black feathers, you can do that black. The beak. Now, I've never drawn a bird with the mouth open, so that's going to be interesting. Letter V. Let's see. And another line here to create. That's the inside part. There's a lot of black little feathers here, even up here. So there we have the bird. Now, <laughs> the legs, I always struggle with them, but you make two parallel lines. I feel like this is a claw. It's not a claw, what is it? The talon? Is it a talon? The nail. And then it's like wrapped around the branch. Which this is the branch here. I'm gonna have a branch go out here this way, and then up here this way. I'm not gonna add too many of these lines yet because I'm not sure how I really want this tree to look like. but more or less that's where I want it to be. A lot more is getting on my nerves. So I've added this really bright yellow and I'm gonna come in with the very light yellow because I only want the bright to be in certain key areas. My plan is to incorporate all the colors of the bird on the background, but I want the background to be an overall white background. So will I be able to make that happen? We'll see. But that's my goal. So brought in some green and some orange. <laughs> it looks like poop. Added a pink and salmon color. Some lavender. I love the way lavender smells. This don't smell like that though. I know I'm going for a white background, but in order to get the effect I want, I have to dark it, darken the background and then light and then lighten it up so you can see that there's color in there once you get up close and personal so I need to lay all the color before I take it away. Brought back in that salmon color and I'm gonna while that dries I'm gonna work on the yellow. I think I might have added too much green to that part. So I have to remove it now. So now I added the white gesso. I didn't add paint because with white paint it's hard to cover up color. So I used an acrylic gesso because I wanted to get some of that green and then I wanted to add just little highlights to the bird. Also the tree because like I said at first glance I want this to look very much white and then once you look at it I'm like oh this is not white. There's all this color going on. So I brought in more blue for the background and I think that's as far as I'm going. I'm going to start taking it back and lightening it up and add some purple. I, the head's not going to be purple but I want to create a blue that's very dynamic and very bold and that there's different layers and it looks differently you know when light touches it or where you view it from I want it to be just a very rich rich blue so I'm gonna layer it with lots of purples before I start adding the blues so I've begun the lightning process I'm starting to love it now I can see it in my head how I want it to look and it's getting closer to that image that I have in my head so I've lightened it considerably but I still want to lighten the left side a lot more so I'm gonna turn the tree into a white birch tree since it's native to North America like this bird is at that it'd be cool and I always wanted to do a tree with the white bark so I've added some of the orange and while I wait to dry I'm trying to replicate it in two smaller paintings because I find it very hard to paint on a small skull so I'm like practicing and while I wait for this to dry they're down there. So when the big one dries, I go to the small one and the small ones and it's <laughs> a lot harder to paint those. I feel like my main problem is I don't have small enough brushes. I also think I'm going to add another tree in there, another branch. I went ahead and added two more trees. I think I'm going to focus on those and I'll save the bird for last. Everything was going nice and smoothly and then I said, let's complicate your life Ramon. Let's add some trees and I'm having a little bit of difficulty with them. But I will solve it. I'm not done with that tree on the left, but that's more or less the approach I'm going to take with all the other ones. So I was a little bit nervous about these trees, but now I'm actually enjoying painting them. 
I'm starting to use a palette knife to texture, you know, the bark. So while the trees are drying, I'm adding color to the bird, bringing in some of the details. I feel like I always love what I'm doing, but I particularly love this one. I'm still not done with the trees. Like, the more I work on them, the more I, the more I want to do with them. I thought the beak was finished, but I keep adding to it. So, as of today, I've been working on it for a complete week. Because I started painting last Monday. Today's Monday. I am done with the trees. Now to focus on the bird, the bird's legs, and the background. So once I think something is done, I go back and change it again. I'm reworking the background, reworking parts of the branches. But everything I decide to redo, I like more than what it looked previous. So it's all good changes, but at this rate, I'm never going to finish. So I keep changing the layout of the wings, but with each change, I like it better. So even though I'm creating more work for myself, I like the result. Those green and blue feathers are my enemy right now. I'm starting to like the feathers now. I am finally done. It actually didn't take me that long, I think two weeks to finish. And I've never painted these type of trees and I really love the way they came out. I actually love everything about this. The light background, I mean, I didn't go as white as I initially thought I would. And for obvious reasons, I love this whole rainbow color. I didn't even know this bird existed. You learn something new every day. I'm very proud of how organized this wing looks. I just really love this painting. I think out of all the bird paintings I've painted, this is probably my favorite one. It flowed very easily, like, sometimes I feel that paintings, and this sounds crazy, I know, but sometimes I feel like they decide how they want to be painted, so it just kind of came together very fast, very easily, and I loved it. Oh, and I was, you know, trying to challenge myself to see if I could paint small scale, and I did it. I didn't enjoy it as much, though, because you have to be very careful with your strokes, because one off stroke, and it kind of ruins it, because it's so small, but I like the way they came out. I like how this one's chubbier. Well, yeah, so I can't paint small scale. Well, it, and it's something that I need to get more comfortable doing since I'm running out of space <laughs> on my walls. So small, you can easily store smaller paintings and stuff like that. And I think you can sell them at more affordable pricing. Art should be accessible for everyone at every price point. But I love this. But I was going to say she, but he's a he because that's totally unfair that birds, the cute ones, are the male ones. I mean, not unfortunate if you're the male one, but if you're the female. But I love this. I forgot what I was gonna, what I was gonna say. Normally, like I'm very scared of doing the legs for some reason, but these, everything, like everything happens so easily. I think the only thing I struggled with this one was this little green wing, but I think it came out great. I think this painting represents me in a lot of ways. Like it has, I always start paintings with the background yellow, which you can see here. Blue is my favorite color the rainbow. I have this thing where I like paintings to have a lot of white in them and that's seen a lot in my work is just the blue and the white. And of course, you know, this little dripping thing that I do here and the pattern. I'm just <laughs> really in love with this painting right now. Oh, uh, but she's leaving. He's leaving. He's leaving. He's a he. So anyway, what did you think about this bunting? That's such a weird name for a bird. Bunting? Painted bunting. Painted bunting bird. Whoever decided to name this bird a heavy eye roll for you. I love it. I can't stop staring at it. Like, I have it next to my desk and I'll just like pause with my work and just like stare at it for a little bit. But let me zoom in so you can take a closer look. Which I feel like the camera or photographs don't ever do justice. So if you ever have the experience to experience art, you know, and go to museums or shows, and stuff like that, you should totally do so. Support your local artist. And yeah, let me zoom in. There's like layers and layers and layers of brush strokes. I like when people experience my art when they look closely, like you, you can see the visible amount of layers it has. And I don't want people to ever say when experience my work, oh, I can do that. I want them to say, whoa, there's a lot of work in here, a lot of detail. And the shadow is my enemy right now. But yeah. Anyway, that's all for today. Make, make sure to subscribe, activate those notifications, 
check out my Instagram, and until next time, adios y bye.